Hello. Good evening. Um, 8.08 by my time. Um, we've done better in the past. We've also done a lot worse. Maybe not. Maybe this is as bad as it gets. I don't know. But good to see you guys. Hey Jim plays games for our heyo. A mouse and miss victory. Yes, victory. Every time every time Dan and I and or I get on here, it's a bit of a victory for sure. And Sting1 underscore JP. Just in time for some maple. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do some some maple stuff. We're gonna do some maple stuff tonight. Oh Dr. Mikachu! Oh my gosh, Dr. Mikachu! <laughs> Oh my gosh, thank you so much for the raid. I'm going to do a quick shout out for Dr. Mikachu. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Awesome. Okay. Let me see if I can do this right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Dr. Mikachu is an amazing streamer. She streams, she seems to know every game engine under the sun and she's really good at showing how those things work step by step and she builds stuff. Monastash. Oh, thanks for the follow. Holy cow. Polar, Polarin. Thank you for the follow as well. Awesome. You guys, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Fantastic. Yeah, Dr. Mikachu is an amazing game dev, and she makes a bunch of different really cool projects. Oh, Kauf, Kauf May, Kaufman Niana. Thanks for the follow. Awesome, you guys. Wow, we're off to a really good start today. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I'm here tonight. I'm glad you guys are here tonight. Cosmic Void 3, good to see you, of course. Judas Butler's Lover, we're going to play the trailer. We will. Pretty soon. I get the feeling. <laughs> um... Deluxe Tux, of course. Good to see you as always. Always time for tea. Hi there. Um, Slat Studio as well. Good to see you. Good to see you. And yeah, thank you so much, K Normalized Knitting, Tracy Facey, um, Via Polar, and of course, Ace and Rex, and Joy Bane. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, so tonight, um, tonight is an art stream. So what we're going to do is I'm first going to show some Adventure Game Studio basics. Um, I'm a solo game dev and I'm working on the Crimson Diamond and um, I'm using Adventure Game Studio because the Crimson Diamond is an adventure game and if you're making kind of a traditional adventure game I feel like there's no better engine than Adventure Game Studio so the past couple streams that have been art streams I've been showing some basics <laughs> Yes, Judith Butler's Lover, your name is now synonymous with the trailer I did a... Um, I did a, a couple different um, segments on some art streams, and I just dropped the links in chat. One of them is starting AGS, Adventure Game Studio, from scratch using one of the templates. So I actually start a completely new project. I put a couple assets in to show you guys how to incorporate the assets, but I kind of wanted to show the very basic stuff that Adventure Game Studio can do, which is, you know, um, walkable areas. So sort of defining where your character can walk, walking behind stuff, changing from room to room. Really a lot of the basic stuff that you need to do when you're making an adventure game. So I tried to cover that a little bit in that first video. And the second video that, I, that is on Nightbot just put down is for if you want to use a text parser in Adventure Game Studio. Not a lot of people know that Adventure Game Studio actually has its own, its own um, game engine. I mean, own um, text parser built in feature and it's actually really easy to use and and i hope more people do end up using it and so i i, I showed that a little bit too and today also is going to be showing inv inventory items so that's one of the things i haven't covered so far is how to how to do inventory items in in adventure game studio so we're going to do that it won't take that long and after that i'm going to show some game art and some progress on some game art that we're working on together. Developer update. Oh, Joy Bane is also a pixel artist who streams. Sweet. Okay, so let's let us let us shout out Joy Bane. Awesome. Yeah, I love I love um, pixel art and pixel artists, and it's always nice to find new ones. So thank you. I can figure this out. Joy Bane. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So we will hopefully we'll get to that too. Uh, yes, game engine stuff. Okay, so yes, Doctor Mikachu's work for for, uh, for game engine stuff. Um, Cosmic Boy Three wants to know: Does Phil Fortier use AGS's parser? And he doesn't actually. I think he's made his own kind of thing. And Phil Fortier did Snail Trek and is working on Cascadia, uh, Cascadia Quest. And Crystal Coconut, thank you for the follow. Awesome. Welcome, welcome to stream, you guys. Cromnall, welcome back. But has anyone played Stasis by the Brotherhood games? Judith Butler's lover wants to know. Oh, Crystal Coconut, you know the spinning in the chair bit. 
which which is in the trailer. Okay, so um, just to give a really brief introduction, yeah, I'm the game dev for the Crimson Diamond. I'm doing everything except for the music, actually. So next week, it possibly will be a Dan stream. Dan Policar is the musician on the project, and we've been live streaming his music composition, which has been really fun to do because we get some feedback from people in chat, and we kind of get to see that whole process. And Dan is really good about kind of making stuff up on the fly. And, and so it's kind of fun and interactive that way. Yes, Phil Fortier put together SCI Companion and Slash Studio is using it for Betrayed Alliance. And Slash Studio is another game dev who is working in the EGA, uh, EGA color palette, which is the kind of strange color palette. Oh, it's mirrored. Okay, here, yeah. That my character Nancy Maple is in, that kind of weird orange flesh color. Is, is the color palette. And so you guys will see that in the game trailer, which I will play extremely, extremely soon. Yes, Deluxe Tux, yeah, there's four Snail Trek games, and I've played, I think, the first one. I'm stuck on the second one right now, but I do have all four of them. And Jim plays games, indeed, EGA stands for Excellent Game Art. And Happy Crimson Katoos Day, you guys. Yes, it's a Night of Nancy. Okay, so... I'm going to play the trailer so you guys can get a like an, an impression of the kind of game it is. It's a text parser game, which I mentioned, and that means you type to do stuff, like open door, talk to people, things like that. So why don't we, uh, let's cut the music and roll the trailer, and then we will get into some Adventure Game Studio basics. Crimson, Ontario was once a prosperous, lively mining town but that was a long time ago. Now it's quiet, nearly deserted, and some folks aim to keep it that way. Nancy Maple is an aspiring mineralogist assigned to follow the trail of a dazzling diamond. An intriguing cast of characters has converged under one roof, each meaning to get their own way, or else. Will Nancy untangle the mysteries and machinations before it's too late? Will the sleepy town of Crimson shine once more? Find out in The Crimson Diamond, an upcoming adventure game by Julia Minamata. The Crimson Diamond demo is available on Steam and Itch.io for Windows PC and Mac OS. Okay, so that is the trailer. So hopefully that gives a decent impression of what the game looks like. And uh, in terms of developer updates, which yeah, you c I kind of usually do at this point. Um, so the demo that is available on the Steam store page is chapter one of seven. I am working on chapter four. I'm right now just doing some animations for chapter four and implementing them. And uh, so I would say that I'm pretty close to finishing chapter four, maybe like 80% potentially. I'm of course not tested, but almost pretty much done. Sakana Kao, I saw you come in. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Okay, so. We are going to proceed to Adventure Game Studio and see what we can see. Give me one moment. Oh, I have to open it. That's probably a good, a good way to start. Ooh, I forgot to turn my captions on. Give me one second too. Um, turning on captions. Vander Snatch, welcome to stream. We're, we're just getting into, you've come at just the right time. First, I have to turn my captions on, and then um, we were going to move right into Adventure Game Studio. And I'm just going to test. Okay, good. Great. It seems to be working. And let's get into Adventure Game Studio. And I haven't changed it yet. I haven't changed the screen yet. Okay. And screen would be... Okay, this one. Okay. Just want to get a um, verification that we everyone's seeing the Adventure Game Studio screen. Happy Crimson Good Tuesday, Grindislav. Oh, Grindislav. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, we're, we're talking about inventory. And I was thinking, yeah, most um, most adventure games have inventories. But um, Grindelwald's um, game, Ro uh, Lamplight City, did not have an inventory system, which shows you that you can have an awesome game without an inventory system. And I'm going to sh shout, out, shout out Francisco, Grindelwald Games, who you may know from... A Golden Wake, the Ben Jordan games, uh, Lamplight City, and the, in, um, the incoming Rosewater, which is going to be awesome. The best worst inventory is Grim Fandango. That's 
That's it. Yeah, you had to scroll through him pulling stuff out of his jacket. Not a good one. But yeah, I mean, I was trying to think of other adventure games that don't have inventories. And we have uh, Lamplight City, Loom, and I couldn't think of any, anything else. I'm sure there's so many more. <laughs> yes, Crystal Coconut. Yeah, um, Adventure Game Studio, I think, is very similar. I, I've never used Game Maker, but it does have a similar setup. I've seen kind of screenshots. And I know people that, uh, for instance, Yahtzee Croshaw used Adventure Game Studio for a lot of his games, like the Chizo Mythos, and he eventually transitioned to using Game Maker, which, and I can see how logically that would be a, an easier transition than something else. Okay. Oh, you could, yeah, you had to scroll for Grim Fandango. Machinarium also had no inventory. Yeah, so there are a few, but I mean, I know I, uh, Grindelstaff mentioned that for Rosewater, his next one, there will, there is an inventory system. Okay, so why don't we just, I'm going to open up some rooms here. So just to give a brief, yeah, I used some of my own Crimson Diamond art for this. Just to give a brief review of what I showed um, on one of the previous Adventure Game Studio segments on on the stream, those are the two links. So the first one is building AGS from scratch from a template, and the second link is using the text parser. And just to go over some of that really, really um, basic stuff that I did did to just review, we, we talked about walkable areas, so defining the area that the character can walk. So this would be that blue area. We talked about creating walk behind, so being able to actually walk behind this table and setting this baseline, which means that if you walk behind the baseline, this thing that I'm moving up and down, you would either be in front of or behind that, that shape that's been created. So we talked about that. We talked about, um, what else? We talked about moving from room to room as well. So let's open that script which would be function room leave left, changes to the second room with x, y coordinates. So we did that. We incorporated one animation, one drawer that we opened, which would be this drawer here. And there was a view assigned to that, which was view two. Views, the animation views are here. And you can see this animation playing out, this drawer opening and closing. So we kind of, that's basically, I think, what we did last time for the game, for this basic, very basic type of game. And I'll run it just as it is for now to show you guys. <laughs> oh, well, oh, you made small text adventure sting on underscore JP. <laughs> you made a nod to the Grim Fandango and his inventory system. Oh, you had to examine the jacket multiple times to get the inventory item that you wanted, yikes. Oh, sure, Dr. Mikachu, thanks for coming. Your raid was awesome. Thank you so much. And yeah, I mean, for sure, take care of your doggy. Your dog's so cute. But yeah, I mean, we'll be here for maybe a couple hours, I think. Okay, so here is the, the game right now that we have. It's a very simple game. It has two rooms. And this, um, this sprite here that's walking back and forth is actually part of the template that we selected. And you can see there's a lot that's already built in. We have walk, look... Uh, interact with talk there's an inventory here which is what we're going to talk about today but um, I just want to show the animation that we created the other day where he walks over and opens the drawer now it's open and you walk over you can close the drawer if it's open yes who is the strange character that has sneaked into the crimson diamond yeah this is this is just what we get this is who you get and the last thing, of course, is walking to this room edge that's defined in the game will change to this next room here. So that's kind of what we covered last time. But today we're going to talk about inventory items. And to do that, well, we can see that he starts with the key. And I set the game to start with this particular item. So why don't we open up the tab for inventory items? The the game template that I picked starts with key and a poster. Oh, always time for tea. You like that Nancy can sit on most furniture? That was one of those things that I did because I couldn't see why not. And it always bothered me when I would be in an adventure game and you couldn't sit on, on things and you couldn't open stuff. And uh, I, also, I also feel like 
it makes the game feel a little bit more cozy and relaxed and comfortable if you could sit places. So yes, in most rooms, if you type sit, she will go and sit somewhere, potentially. This should be some kind of achievement for sitting in everything that you could sit on. But I haven't done achievements yet in Steam because I don't know how. Um, maybe that'll be something in the future. Oh, cool! Sting, under, Sting one underscore JP, you you won a inter, an interactive fi fiction competition in two thousand two. Sweet. Uh, oh, I, lo I love this. I love I love interactive fiction. I even love like the non graphical stuff or the stuff that's like static static backgrounds, like a lot of the adventure on work. I love that stuff so much. <laughs> this template character looks like Roger Wilco after one of his many deaths. Ooh, Grindelwald drops a fun fact: the Roger template character was made by Chris Jones creative AGS by tracing over Space Quest 4 sp sprites. So why don't we look at the first view here? So here is that beautiful um, Chris Jones created sprite. So there is his front facing walk. We have his side facing walk, other way, and up. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I might poke Emerald Pond for Steam achievement stuff. Dr. Mikachu, thank you. Okay, so that is our beautiful baked-in uh, character that we get. So let's close that. And so yeah, today we're talking about inventory. And the first thing you want to do is open that first one. There is image and inventory window, which is what we saw. There is this mouse cursor image, which is something I changed it to. And I can show you what that does change. And you can choose on this menu here on the bottom right Cursor image is, is image five. You could change that to whatever you happen to have uploaded here. So I've changed it to this gigantic key. The image for the actual inventory item is two, which is this one. And you can see that we've I've set the 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 uh, inventory item to something the player starts with. You can ch you can change this to yes or no, true or false. And so what happens is um, if we open up the GUI, ooh, hold on, just let me swap to. Big Julia, and um, check on notifications. Mads Hatter. Mads Hatter. Oh no, why does my activity feed not just say what that was that just faded? Thank you for thank you for whatever that was. I appreciate that. Um, I'm I'm not really strong with the with the OBS stuff. Oh, it's a host. Thank you, Mads Hatter. Thank you for the host. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty well, Mads Hatter. It's good to see you. Hope you're well too. Oh, whoops, wrong wrong window. Um, that was what we're going to go to next. Okay, so here we have the inventory. So right now, oh, yeah, I was going to show the GUI. I'm sorry. I, I got mixed up a little bit. Justin Paul, sir, good evening. Justin Paul um, is another Canadian game dev. And I always mention Panzer Paladin, Justin Paul. I don't even know. Wait, is your, should I call you Justin or Justin Paul? Because I always call you Justin Paul. And I can't remember anymore. I always mention Justin Paul work, uh, worked on, created the amazing Panzer Paladin, which is out, if anyone wants to play that. I know he's working on something else right now, but he says he can't talk about it, so we're not going to talk about it. Okay, Justin. Okay, Justin is fine. Yeah, Justin is another awesome Canadian game dev who's working on something he can't talk about. <laughs> and I met him over PAX a million years ago, which is actually a year almost to the day the, um, today. It could have been a year uh, yesterday, the day before. We have an inventory, a GUI for the inventory. Now, th all of these ones here, the status line, the icon bars, everything, all of these are included in the template, and you can easily change these images to whatever you want. So you can change this image to some other image if you upload them. So we can change it to Roger or whatever. So, I mean, you can see how that, how that is very easy to modify. But the one we're interested in today is the inventory. So this is, where, this is where all the inventory items go, of course. And there are a couple statuses here you can change to. You can either have look at the inventory item, or you can select it and then use that item in the game. And so what we have here is if we start the game up and we take a look at the inventory window, Up here, here it is. If I select it, oh, can I not select it? Maybe not. There's no, there's nothing set for looking at this item yet. 
And although I don't know, oh, there it goes. So if I select this like this, you can see it's turned into this giant key because that's the image I've set it to. But it's probably better for this image to be something more suitable like the small key. In fact, I actually think those two should be switched around. So in the inventory, we'll make it the big key. And then for when we're using it in game, we'll make it the smaller key. And we can see what that looks like. OK. And here we go. There it is. There's the inventory item. We might want to make this whole thing black, potentially. But anyway, that's, that's minor. And if we select it, you can see we've now got it as the, cur the mouse cursor image is now the key. Although we don't have anything to use it on yet. So why don't we fix that? And I actually had to teach myself this earlier on today because the Crimson Diamond is a text parser game. So I never have an instance where I'm using inventory items as a cursor on anything in my game. So I had to quickly look up how to do this. But here's how to do that. Let's say we wanted the key to be used on this drawer. In fact, we have, to, if, we have to make the drawer locked first, I guess, in order for the key to do anything. So why don't we do that first? Let's set a bool drawer locked. So let's start it at true. And let's say if the player interacts with that drawer, and if the drawer is closed, which is the, the, the drawer has a frame of 0 right now, because if we look at that view, view 2. If the drawer has a view of 0, it would be this closed view. And so if we have that, we can say if drawer locked is true or false. If it's, if it's unlocked, we can open it. So why don't we do that? Else display the drawer is locked. Slat Studio, says, Slat Studio says, Evan's going to be glad Roger's there to help out with janitorial duties. Jack's going to be glad. Jack is the one who's been running around ragged with all these guests in the Crimson Lodge. Let's see. So that we've done that. And let's see. If the drawer frame is that. Oh, you know what we need to do? If the drawer frame is that. Oh, this actually has to go. This is where the brackets get a little bit funny. If the drawer frame is zero, right now this is not going to probably work properly because I've, I've set it up a little incorrectly. But let's see what it does, because I, I have a feeling that this is not quite right. But we're going to do it. So we're going to interact with this. It's going to walk over there. The drawer is locked. OK, great. So that does work. <laughs> Slide Studio, it's all good. OK, so there's that. If the drawer frame is this, um, else if, if the drawer frame is, n if the drawer, oops, if the drawer is not closed, if the drawer is not closed, we can say the drawer is already open or something. OK. Oh, else. OK. And so now we need to make it so the key will make the drawer unlocked. And the way we do that is we can set a hotspot. And why don't we be really generous and just make this whole area here the hotspot? And we can set an action, an event for that hotspot, so we can say, Use inventory on hotspot here. And then we, we click this ellipsis. It creates a function, hotspot1 use inventory. And we go if player.active inventory is i key, then we can set this bool that we had drawer locked to false. Um, else, 
Oh. A game dev rule number one, don't make the player pixel hunt. Yeah, for sure. Oh, well, I... Oops. It's not... I think it's not a C ego here. I think the... I think then the template is called C ego. Oh. What have I done? Active info... Let's just check the syntax here. Active inventory property. Okay. If C dot... Uh, is equals... Oh, equals. Sorry. You see, here's the, it's important to check this. So that's the syntax, the, the appropriate syntax for this. Um, oops. Okay. Equals. All right. This is how we know it's live. Yeah, when it's when it's when everything is goes wrong. Okay. So C um, active info is key. Do that. Else. Let's do an else. Else display that doesn't work. And we can test that, I think, with the other inventory item that gets baked in, which is this poster, which doesn't really look like a poster, but is a poster. So why don't we have the player start with that too? So we can test trying to use the poster on the drawer. And maybe we have a, a message that says, you unlock the drawer with the key. <laughs> oh, what have I done? Slash Studio is your programming mi mantra? <laughs> yep, no one likes a pixel hunt. Unless it's done for fun, like in Thimbleweed Park, where you have the lint. Then I think that, that's acceptable. Let's see if this works. I only tried this once this afternoon, and it did work. So let's hope it works today. I gr well, for the <laughs> right now. Okay. Uh, let's try to use the poster. Okay. So yeah. So any other active item is not going to work. So you can't use whatever this is on the drawer. But, and let's try opening it again as it is. Drawer is locked. Okay. But we have the key. So let's use the key. You un Oh, you know what? We haven't had him walk over there. But he has unlocked the drawer from across the room. So let's fix that. It's all in the testing. Okay. Make him walk over there. Yes. Karasalash. Oh, wait. You told me once how to pronounce this. Karasalash. Karasalash. Is that right? I'm usually pretty good about remembering that kind of stuff. If, if, I'm, not, if I'm not right, please tell me. Okay. So why don't we have the player walk over there, unlock, and then have the drawer unlock. Okay. There we go. Shouldn't the use command on the drawer also make the player walk to the drawer? Crystal Coconut says yes. Yeah, everything should. You unlock the drawer with the key. So now that we've unlocked the drawer with the key, yeah, it's better than not better than you're not close enough. We can now hopefully open the drawer. Yes, and we can open the drawer. Sweet. So there we go. Will this work now, or did I break that? The drawer is already open, so that's a problem. <laughs> we don't want that. We actually want the drawer to close again. So, if the drawer is open, we're gonna do this. We are going to animate this backwards to make the drawer close. We can comment this out. Maybe we want some description. Or you know what, we do want a description, don't we? So backwards, we'll make the drawer close again. And the drawer is closed. Oh, Deluxe Ducks, you don't like it when the look command makes your player walk around the room? Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not crazy about that either. I, I think for examine in, in the Crimson Diamond, she will move closer to something to look at it. But for general look, I don't think she does. Why don't we try this again? Let's us unlock the drawer. Okay, let us open the drawer. Hmm. 
and then let's close the door. Great. I mean, we could make the key lock the door again, but it's kind of, we don't really need to do that today. Great. Okay. So that's that. That's for when the character starts with an inventory item, but what if we want the character to pick up the inventory item from something? So we're going to do that next. Yeah, right-click look is really nice. I like that a lot. And people have asked me if I'm going to do that with the Crimson Diamond, and I have said no. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't have a good reason why I, I haven't done that. I think it's really handy. Um, I guess maybe I feel like if I don't have right-click to look, it kind of encourages people to read the text descriptions of the rooms. I don't know. I could be convinced otherwise, though, potentially. Right. OK, so why don't we make it so there is an object in this room? Eden Waith, hola, good to see you. Yes, this is the space janitor who works at Crimson Lodge. This is, this is a, um, a sequel. This is in the future. So why don't we create an object in the room for the character to pick up? So we go to this nice handy dandy drop down menu. We go to objects. We can place a new object here. So I right clicked, to place a new object here. The default is the blue cup, but we probably don't want it to stay that way. When we ch change it to the handy dandy key. Oh, Amber Seen. Well, thank you for subscribing. Nine months? Holy cow. That's, yeah, I mean, you've been with us since the beginning. I really appreciate it. Sweet. Let us look here. OK. So the, so we have it being visible. So this you can set. If you want something else to happen in the room before the key becomes visible, we could do that too. But we're going to just keep it visible here. And we need to call it something. We'll call it O key. And the naming convention is that's how we generally do it in Adventure Game Studio. So inventory items start with a small i in the upper right-hand corner here. I key, I poster, objects in rooms tend to start with a small O. I mean, that's just the naming convention. Of course, you can do whatever you want, but we have a key now. And so why don't we say, um, okay, we can create an event for it. So if we pick interact object, oh, you know what, why don't we do look? In fact, come to think of it, we should have the character be able to look at the key in their inventory. So why don't we do that first? I completely forgot. So one of the events you can do while it is in the inventory window is have look at the inventory item. And because this is for demonstration only, we're going to do the very unhelpful, it's a key, which I don't recommend anyone actually do. And we'll, we'll just quickly demonstrate what that is. And all the other code you see here was, is all stuff that Adventure Game Studio already has in it for all the save game functions and stuff. I did not type that stuff in there. So if you look in here, we take the eyeball examination and we click here, it's a key. So of course you can add other um, actions here. So you can have, you know, combine items or touch the item or whatever. But the one that it, the default inventory GUI has is this look. So we've said it's a key. Fantastic. Very, very not helpful. Yes, Jim plays games. In Monkey Island 3, you get an auger as an item. You had no idea what the word meant, so naturally Guybrush looked at it and said, it's an auger. <laughs> and you know what? Um, I'm reading a book on adventure games. It's called, hold on, let me tell you what it is. It is called... Because I, there is something that blew my mind when I read this book, when I'm, as I'm reading this book, that I'd never realized. One of the differences between Sierra games and LucasArts games. Okay, the, the, the book is called The Guide to Classic Graphic Adventures, and it's by, compiled and edited by uh, Kurt Collada. Kurt Collada wrote this book, and it's an exhaustive, um, description, set of series of descriptions of of adventure games from you know the so-called the golden age of adventure games, and it has some interviews with Josh Mandel and Al Lowe, other and other game developers, 
and it's pretty it's pretty educational. And the thing that I learned that the difference between Sierra games and LucasArts games I had never considered was in a LucasArts game, yeah, when you look at stuff, it's it's the the player character, you know, saying, for instance, looking at this curio cabinet. If you if you, if you know you clicked on this, the Roger Wilco character would say it's a curio cabinet. But in a Sierra game, there's a third person narrator that would say it's a curio cabinet, potentially. Yeah, either way, it's called, um, it's by Kurt Kalata. So Kurt is K-U-R-T, Kalata is K-A-L-A-T-A, and it's called The Guide to Classic Graphic Adventures. And um, yeah, so I didn't realize that in Sierra games, the narration happens third person. And in a LucasArts game, the narration happens, I guess, like second person perspective. Yeah, I was totally, I didn't know why I never figured that out, but it is a big difference between LucasArts and Sierra games. Slash <laughs> Studio, you don't like the third person descriptions? Yeah, the, yeah, the, the narrator is almost a character in, in the Sierra games. <laughs> yes, Gary Owen, you know, I, I'm on the I'm on the side that Gary I think Gary Owen added a lot to that game, and I do I enjoy the second person, but I don't know I, I kind of prefer the third person because it makes it more like a book. For me, I mean, of course you can have, I guess you can have a second second person book, of course, but I, I prefer the third person perspective. <laughs> the third person descriptions in King's Quest Six were funny to you, Crystal Coconut. I I like that narrator. I really I really enjoy that character instead of a character. But yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, so what I so what we did yeah is show that you can write the description here. You can make it more helpful than what I've done here, of course. But right now, if you click on the key, as it is, oh yeah, you're probably not going to want to start with the key and then also have the key on the floor. So we'll change that. So let's go back to the key item, and we can set that to player does not start with the item. So set that to false. And if we see the key on the floor in the room, that's what we want to change. We want that to do something. So if we look at that object, we can have a very descriptive and helpful thing here where we can go, it is a key on the floor. Don't, don't write like this, by the way. Yeah, Karasalash. Um, I definitely think the Quest for Glory jokes also would be weird if they came from the actual character. Okay, so. Look, at it's a key on the floor. And then why don't we add the other one, too, where if you interact with the object. Hmm, actually, pick it up. If you pick up the object, a number of things should happen. First thing that should happen when you pick up the object is it should not appear in the room anymore. So we need to do O key visible false. Second thing we need to do is add the key to our inventory. So we do that by player add inventory I key. And then we would like to display something that says you pick up the key. Okay. Oh, Hand of Glory by Mad at Games also had those jo kind of jokes? Or they did the jokes through the hero? Let's test this. Oh, past tense narration. Hmm. So if we look at the key on the floor, it is a key on the floor. Oh, you know what we didn't do that I forgot to do? He has to walk over there to pick that key up, right? In fact, Gruntislav helped us with this last time, last time we worked on AGS basics. So if we, want, if we want the character to be this close to the key, Gruntislav gave us a little bit of code where if I press control P, the main character's current position is listed in the display. So we can see it's the x value is 177, y value is 159. 177, 159. So if you want the character to pick that key up, we can make the player walk to 177, 159, 
blocking unwalkable areas. Is it possible to actually remove the key from the scene instead of hiding the key? Eden with wants to know. Um, I do not know if you could actually do that. I've never considered it. If we pick it up, is this not the pickup button? Uh oh. Maybe it's, maybe this has to be the interact one again. Interesting. Okay, so I guess that for this object, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. That's another thing. We're, we're going to have to deal with that too, of course. I'll I'll, I'll put. Um, there's a bit of like an extra line of programming that we have to do to make sure we don't do that. Um, but we'll get around to that. I just need to. I think. I guess it's interact with object. And we're just going to take this and copy it down here. But I know what you mean. We'll we'll, we'll demonstrate that after I get <laughs> I get this part working. Okay. I wonder if yeah. It's wonder weird that it's not pick up. Hopefully it's interact. So here we go. Yeah, here we go. So it's the interact one. Goes there, you pick up the key. But I suppose for this, because the key is no longer here, you can't really pick it up twice anyway. But let's say, for instance, it is something where the key does not, like if it was a different type of item where you would still see that thing. So let's say you're picking up a Jordan almond from a candy dish, and you're not taking all the almonds, you're just, just taking some. In which case you can continue to take almond potentially. So why don't we why don't we code for that? Because I know exactly what you mean. So let's say let's say if you can use your imagination, let's say this is a stack of keys that's inexhaustible. Right? So let's say you can keep on at you can keep on picking that up. Um, I don't know if it's going to let you. Actually, I don't know if Adventure Game Studio is going to let you pick up infinite keys. So pick up the key, pick up the key, pick up the key. Are we going to have a bunch of keys? I really have no... Oh, we only have one key in, in inventory. Weird. But you can see, I mean, if, if the key does not disappear, but we don't want him to pick up more than one key. Yeah, let's say it's a stack of... Yeah, a stack of cheese, a stack of keys. And so if this, um, if the object did not turn invisible, what you can do, of course, is you can check the inventory. So if the player has it, then you would not let them do it. So why don't we do that? If we go, if player has, inv has inventory, I key. Oh, no, if they don't have it, <laughs> false, then let them pick it up. Else display, you already have a key. Yeah, Chrome, no, it's good that it's not making multiple instance of the keys, but if you want to do that, you, I mean, I think you can also do that, but I just actually don't even know. Because I don't actually, for Crimson Diamond, because it's a text parser game, I don't actually use this part too much. But... I'm sure you can set it so you can pick up multiple of the same thing if, if you really want. Like if this was a game where you picked up bullets or something and you wanted a bunch of them. So that's, I'm sure you could do that. But yeah, so for now we're doing... The key does not disappear. It's a stack of keys. If you don't have a key, you'll pick it up. And if you have one, you, it, the game will return that you already have one. Oh, uh, thank you, Does on Drums. Welcome to chat. General setting to change it from stacking items to showing multiple. Cool. Okay, let's, let's let's check that out after I just test this. Pick it up the first time. You already have a key. So so right now the game is checking. I have it in my inventory. I do. I already have the key, so it won't let me pick up any more. It's a general setting? Awesome. Thank you, thank you. Let's take a look here. Inventory. Oh, here we go. So display multiple icons for multiple items. Inventory item cursor hotspot marker none. Override built-in window use select. Okay, so this one then. If a player has two or more of an item, it would be displayed multiple times. Okay, so let's do that. Thank you. That's awesome. I did not know that. This is actually a hidden benefit of me 
showing you guys this is that people, you know, sometimes people pipe up with stuff I did not know, and that's really cool. Ah, interesting, Crystal Coconut. You had a book about the making of King's Quest IV, and it was orange. Interesting. I did not know that was a thing. So it was written by Roberta Williams, The Making of King's Quest IV. That would be a really cool book. I've never heard of that one, actually. Why don't we try to pick up a bunch of keys then? Oh, you know what? I gotta, I gotta disable the code we just put in there. Hold on. To let me do that. So let's just, um, let's just comment that out. Okay, so let's try to pick up a bunch of keys. Thank you, thank you, by the way. It does on drums. I did not know this. Okay, let's pick up a bunch. One. Two. Three. Whoa! Delightful. Oh, cool, you found it, Crystal Coconut. It's called The Official Book of King's Quest. Yes, has for learning new things. And yeah, Jim plays games. It can definitely be a problem if you're checking the player doesn't have an item as a way to check if they've reached a certain point of the game. If you unintentionally made it possible to get multiple copies and only one is removed, it can be a game-breaking bug. Speaking of removing inventory items, we can do that too. And I'll, I'll, I'll quickly show that as well. But this is cool. Look, I can pick up a ton of these things. Fantastic. Look at this. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Today I learned. But I think we're going to change this one back. And yeah, here it is. That's awesome. OK, so that's going to be back to false. And I actually, I actually don't need any of this extra stuff because once the key is invisible, it's not a, a problem anymore. So let's just set it to its easiest way. <laughs> one, two, three keys. Ah, ha, ha. So here we go. Pick it up once. Then it's gone. No worries about picking up more. So that's that. But if we did want something to happen, like you you know, you, you progress through the game to another area and you want to remove some inventory items from the player's inventory just to make it easier on them, definitely you can do that. And that, that command is, intuitively enough, remove inventory, I think. No? Player dot, is it not remove inventory? I was gonna say it's easy enough and now I can't find it. Let's take a look. To the to the index. Inventory. Inventory item events. Nope. Inventory. Hmm. What is the command? Grindus Live with Grindus Oh lose inventory. Thank you. Yes, thank you, does Androm. So I, I take it you're a, a, an AGS game dev. Do you have any projects you want to share with us at all? If you do, please drop them in chat. Yes. So it's lose inventory. Uh, lose inventory would be would be the command we would do um, if you wanted to to for whatever reason do something where. You know, you progress through the game where you do something, you fall or it's in a lake or something, you lose all your inventory items, a gnome comes by and, and pickpockets you, whatever you want to do to the player to make them lose inventory, you can do, totally do that. Oh, doing Unity stuff now. Oh, does on drums did Intergalactic Wizard Force? That sounds kind of awesome. And Jim Plays Game says, seeing this engine again is making you want to make a new game with it. Please do. I mean, either if you're going to make one that is like a point and click like this or a text parser. Nooms. Yes, if, that's, if there's a noom. Happy Crimson Cthulhu's Day, by the way, of anyone who missed it. But I think, what else did I want to show? I've got, well, I've got some notes. Give me a second. Here. Looking at items in the inventory window. Interacting with hotspots. Okay. Yes. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to show. 
If there's if there's a link to playing Intergalactic Wizard Force or a place that we can buy it, please put that in chat for sure. Because you've been so helpful. And and anyone who has projects they want to share in chat, please do. Cause because that's what we're here to do is like learn learn cool things, learn about new new games. But I think that's all I wanted to to show. Just as a quick just as a quick review of what we did today, we worked on the inventory inventory feature in Adventure Game Studio. So we looked at the GUI here of this is the inventory area. We changed these cursors, image in, in, in the inventory window, the mouse cursor image. You can set in the bottom right whether the play starts with it or not. And Change, this is where you can change the images. If you know the number of the sprite, or if you don't, you can open this up and you can seek it here. We had the player move to pick up a key. For some reason, the pickup doesn't work, so let's just get rid of that. That did not work. Strangely enough, it's in the interact that we want, not the pickup. But you can see, you can set anything here in terms of where you can talk to an object or have your own user modes as well. Ooh, the drifter. Ooh. And thank you, Jim Play, Jim Plays Games, for um, Intergalactic Wizard Force, the itch.io. Sweet, perfect. Always time for tea, have a good night. Thanks for coming, I really appreciate it. So, we, yeah, so here's this the inventory stuff. We also set this general eye look, it's a key for looking at the key in the inventory window. And of course, we created this hotspot in room one where the key can be clicked on to open to unlock this drawer. Um, so that's pretty much all I wanted to show for using inventory. And I think beyond that, oh, and I see CGG, good to see you. Yes, the peek behind the AGS curtain. Yeah, we just I just showed kind of the all the basic stuff you can do with the with the inventory stuff in AGS. There's some fancier stuff too, like um, oh, you know, we can probably show one more thing. I say that now, but I've never done this before, so this could be a disaster. So that's a good way to start, isn't it? Okay, um, we can use inventory on this item. I don't know how to do this. So this is what this would be for combining inventory items. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. Instead, <laughs> instead, why don't we pretend like there's a change of state for an inventory item, and we wanted to change that graphic to something else? I can I can tell you quickly what that is. Yes, the best end results come out of the worst disasters. And the CGG. I don't know if I agree with you. So let's say after you pick up the key, the graphic changes to something else for whatever reason. We can change the key to look like, I don't know how to combine items because I don't, my inventory does not get used like that. So let's say the, it gets turned into this beautiful picture of a drawer. Oh, uh, and Deluxe Tux has a question. You mentioned you can add stuff to the stock inventory screen, is that all custom or is it stock but toggleable? Okay, give me one second. I'm just gonna quickly show this bit. And then I will try to address that. Okay. So if we take this, it should change the item inventory item picture to the drawer, which it did. Yeah. So that's what that does. And I've used that a few times, so I, I, I understand how to do that. But Stock inventory screen. So this one, the GUI for the inventory. So this is this came with the template. And every every bit of it you can change. So I can change, um, for instance, the inventory window. I can change the color of it to some, to whatever I want. You can change these arrow keys to, you know, whatever uh, images I want. 
Um, so all this can be reskinned. And these these are just completely images. So you can change those. So all yeah, all this stuff can be reskinned really easily with your own graphics. And you can change the size of this window if you want to. Um, I don't know if this is answering your question. I hope it is. And you can just you know drag this stuff down to here if you want. Okay, good. Yeah, so if I if I used to launch it like this. Yeah, now it's <laughs> not quite <laughs> it's a bit inconvenient now. But it will still work. Oh whoops. Let's uh do that. And this is the beauty of Adventure Game Studio. All the stuff, all the basic stuff that you'd want to do in terms of functionality with an adventure game, it's all here already, and you just have to reskin. Which that doesn't do anything. Oh, arrogant logician! Good to see you. Welcome back. Oh, hold on, let me check my OBS. Why is it? Not showing me what that activity was. Whatever that sound was, thank you for whatever that was. Thank you for making a sound. It's a key. This would be scroll up, that would be scroll down, this is close. It's a host. Why doesn't why doesn't my version of OBS tell me when something is a host? Thank you for the host. Thank you, thank you for the host. I appreciate it. Okay, so that is that's what we wanted to do today um, with Adventure Game Studio. I think that covers all the basics, walking around, moving from room to room, um, inventory handling. If there's anything else that you guys want to, to learn about in, in Adventure Game Studio, um, I'm not sure what else I could show. I showed the text parser. There is the dialogue section here. Where is it? There's a dialogue section which I have no idea how to use because uh, the Crimson Diamond is a text parser game, so all the conversation you have is via the text parser. I have no idea how to do dialogue in any other way. Like, I don't know how to do a dialogue tree. So I don't know if I, I'm not the right person to really show you that part, unfortunately. Oh, no, Eric and Logician, um, we had a raid earlier on with more than five, and it did not show. On, on my activity feed, so no worries. Yeah, Karasalash, um, Adventure Game Studio is a great tool. Oh, Cosmic Void 3, you've done, have you done Dialogue Tree? Is there costume changing in AGS? Costume. The only way I can imagine doing costume change is doing an alternate view completely and, and just having recoloring or redoing you know, reskinning this and having a, a different view for that, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I have no idea how to do branching dialogue, so I'm not the one to ask. But I think I think in in this the past couple of videos I've quickly shown just the basics, and that's pretty much all you really need to make something fairly simple. So I think that's that's that, and hope you guys found that useful. Yes. Arrogant Logician, AGS is free. You can use it to make commercial releases. I always mention Grindislav's games, Lamplight City, his in uh, incoming game, Rosewater, of course, Dave Gilbert of Wadged Eye Games with Unavowed, and um, the Blackwell series, Kathy Rain as well. There's a ton of really, really good AGS games. Oh, interesting. Quest for Glory had costume changes. They had three parts, body, head, and legs, and they mixed and matched them to make different characters. I did not know that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just basically... I, when If I was going to do a costume change, and actually there is a costume change in the Crimson Diamond that you can do in the demo, and I just redid the whole sprite. And a CGG, I have all the Blackwell games. I have not played them yet, but I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yes, yeah, Kathy Rain is AGS. I'm pretty sure it is. 
and it's really yeah it's really cool to know that for sure and all of Yahtzee Croshaw's Chizo Mythos games are also AGS okay so we're gonna move on from AGS for now I don't know if I'll do another another video with a, an, an AGS segment or not because I think I pretty much covered just about everything um, I didn't cover audio maybe we can do audio next time potentially maybe that's something we can look at I, I'm actually really not that clear on how to use the audio I just know the very basics and good arrogant, arrogant logician I'm glad you have Rosewater on your wish list I it, it's gonna be really good like Francisco has been making AGS games for years he, that, that'll be his 12th or 13th or 14th game so he definitely knows what he's doing so let's move on let us move on to some art and this is the scene we've been working on a little bit here and there for for the past few weeks when I get around to it I think we're gonna be done tonight at around 10 oh Justin wants to, Justin wants to know even though I'm knee-deep in the Crimson Diamond do you ever think about what you'd like to make after this and I I've got a lot of ideas so I know I want to make a sequel for sure I, I do want to make a sequel um, and I'm just looking at these shadows and I realize these shadows on these trees is not is not where I want them to be so I'm gonna just get rid of those I have a, I have a sequel idea already um, for sure but I also want to do some smaller stuff I want to um, I want to actually play around with adventure on which is Chris Ainsley's really, really cool text parser game adventure, um, engine. I, I want to do that. I think it's, it's so cool, I want to learn it. Um, so there's that, I want to learn how to use that. I want to make, I would love to make like a CGA game. I know that's a strange thing to say, but, or I want to make a game that's AGI, I want to make a double wide pixel kind of game. Just something, just something small. I think that would be a lot of fun. But I definitely have an idea for the next, the next um, Crimson Diamond. Yeah, the Crimson Diamond two. This time there's two diamonds. And Crimson Diamond, Eden Wait wants to know: Does Crim will Crimson Diamond have any achievements in the game? And yeah, that's what I was I was talking about a little bit before where I'm, I, I don't know how to do that, but I probably will have a few when I figure that out. Um, yeah, I think Mika, Dr. Mikachu very helpfully said that Emerald Pond would help me potentially with implementing that. Oh, what happened? File cannot be found. It's not that good. Yes. Just a Jeffy, yes. There will be a sequel. Oh, in game, Arrog Arrogant Logician. And AGS has a, you don't think AGS has a programming for Steam API to enable st Steam achievements? I could have sworn. Doesn't, doesn't Francisco have some Steam achievements for Lamplight City? Or no? Yeah, just Justin, yeah, for sure. A backlog of ideas is super key, I think. And, and Francisco said the same thing. You know, it's, it, he asked me that question too. Do I have any plans of what I want to do next? And uh, yeah, he he says it's really important to kind of have that kind of to think about. Make a game in the proper AGI engine? Yeah, I would not. Cross lush, you're right. It would be rough. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, CGA. Yeah, I want to make some CGA stuff. The the only CGA piece that I've made um, was not for a game. It was actually um, just an illustration for 1900 Hot Dog, which which was making the rounds today on Twitter again. Oh, Jim plays games. It might require third-party software. I'd have to ask Francisco. Could I? I could have sworn Lamplight City had achievements. Yes, time for crimson herrings. Yeah, Dr. Mikachu, what was for dinner? Yeah, we're just, um, I'm just working on this piece again. I'm just adding some shadows. Generally, 
That point should be darker, I guess. Yes, Arrogant Logician, Land Play City is AGS. It does have achievements. It, there is a way. I will find a way. Yes. Yes, it, there is AGI Studio for AGI Goodness. Uh, there's SCI Companion. I'm probably just going to stick with Adventure Game Studio. Fried Rice is amazing. Dr. Mikachu. Jessica Jeffy wants to know, can we get a Sierra-style box release? Oh, that's one of those things where it would be really, really cool to do. I'm not sure. I would I would like to do that. But that's kind of a, a difficult one to swing. But I will never say never to something like that. We will see. Oh, AGI editor to make custom AGI games. This studio was last updated 2003. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, after taking all this time to learn one thing, I'll taking all this time to learn Adventure Game Studio, I'm probably going to stick with it for a little while. Hmm. Talk to Stephen Emond, Emond about big box release. Let's take a look. Steven Emond. Yes, tell your friends to buy Crimson Diamond so it sells a bazillion copies. We get cool merch. And I can make sequels. Yes. Ah, uh, thank you, Justin Jeffy. Sierra Collector's Quest. Cool. Yeah, cross loss. You can yeah, I can I can emulate double wide pixels by just I guess by drawing, just drawing at um, 160 by 320 and then just stretching it. Possibly. Yes, Kickstarter games talk t is is a lesson in how physical goods are expensive. Okay, Justin Jeffy says Stephen Eamon is the Sierra Collector's Quest guy. Thank you for the link, by the way. Cool. Okay. And I'm one I'm wondering. Oh yeah, I think what will really help to make this look more finished would be working on the guy. So let's work on the guy. We haven't really did, let's duplicate that in case we hate what we've done. So here is what he looks like so far. And this, this image here that I have is the Twitter profile pic of Doug Herring, who is the, who is the artist for the Colonel's Bequest. And was a major inspiration of mine for the Crimson Diamond. So we're using kind of him as our starting point. So why don't we get in there I can find my stylus. Uh oh. Oh, here it is. Okay. Yeah, Cosmic 43. I would, yeah, it's probably the easiest way I can think of to do the AGI double wide pixels. Yeah, just 160 by 320. Stretch it out occasionally to see what it looks like. Squish it back down. I think an A sprite, you can make a brush that is double wide as well. So maybe I'll, I'll transition more to A sprite if I was going to do a little game in, the, in AGI style. Physical stuff is way more expensive these days, Arrogant Logician says. Production supply and economic demand, yeah. <laughs> hey, hello, Sklo1. You wrote a scrappy filter in OBS that cuts the color depth of an input to four CGA colors and tries to stipple the output? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and you try to play the demo with it? Can you? My gosh. Um, can you do screen caps of it? Are you on Twitter? Can you can you um, if you're on Twitter, can you can you um, share screen caps and tag me or something? That would be super interesting to see. Um, I think I've shown the one piece. Of, well, actually, yeah, I have worked. I I worked. I started working on this CGI version of a um, Cyberpunk 2077 screen. One of the many things I started but did not finish. That was a lot of fun. And my other my other um, foray into CGA, 
And it's never close at hand. It, sh it should be easier to find. Where did it go? The thing I did for 1-900-HOT-DOG. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Uh, this thing. So this is the only completed piece of CG art I've done. Hey, Mega Hammer Studios, good to see you. <laughs> yes, a homage to Doug Herring. The fisherman in the game is Doug Bow, which is a combination of Doug Herring and Laura Bow, and the fish is a herring that he catches. Hmm. Just a Jeffy says a Sierra's collector's quest is funded and will include a Sierra style box. That's awesome. I love the boxes that had this, like the bandolier, like the slip cover, the box, and then the slip cover thing. That, that was my favorite kind of uh, Sierra game box. Yes, it's not a red herring, it's a crimson herring. <clears throat> you say that I very nearly called the game the crimson herring, but I was advised against it <laughs> by wiser people. Yeah, this is my one and only CGA. So I would love to do something CGA, for sure. My voice is kind of going. I wonder if I can make it to 10. Or, or you just don't mind me sounding gravelly. Wow. Oh, neat. OK, perfect. Thank you, Sklo, Sklo, Sklo one for the, for the link. The crimson herring lives on in our memory. You wish you'd talk to those wiser people slash studio and I don't think your game title is awful. Crimson Herring should be name of one of the achievements. <laughs> mm. How does you know, how does Marge Simpson do her? Mm. My Marge Simpson voice. Homer. <laughs> Homer, I don't think you should drink that. I can't think of a good, good, um, I'll tell you when you're older. All right. Let's get in here and, and try to make this character look a little, oh, homie. Oh, dear. Hey, Pilkoon. Um, so what I'm going to do, actually, before I get started on this is I'm actually going to isolate him from the rest of the background using a color that I don't anticipate I'll be using with him. Actually, I seem to be using quite a lot of the color. I don't think I'll be using this green. So why don't we give him a green so we can completely isolate him from the background. Anyone else have any Marge Simpson quotes I could try? I can't think of any right now. Yikes. Playing the fist like a violin. Irreverent Pixel, good to see you. <laughs> yeah, we just I'm just doing my best Marge Simpson impression. Cause I, I guess I'm not used to talking anymore. But yeah, let's work on this guy. Pink shirt, eh? What was I thinking? Okay. And I'm sorry if I'm going to cause the screen to shake a little bit. Oh, that's not what we want. Because um, the webcam is right here, and I'm working right here. Oh, yeah, it's a green screen. Good point. So why don't we get, why don't we start working in some of this detail? I don't know how much detail we're going to actually get. a weird resolution. Yes, yeah, Slide Studio. It can be hard to pe put put clothes on people. Um, you only have so many choices. <laughs> For sure. Uh, 
We're gonna give him. Are we gonna give him Doug's awesome hair? I don't know. I kind of. I kind of want him not to have the awesome hair. Be more generous with the hair. <laughs> hmm. The irony is I don't, I'm not sure if that actually is the EGA palette proper. I hope so. It is indexed and everything. So I hope, I, I hope I've done it right. I use Medibank Paint on the iPad and that actually lets you use hex values. And so I, I appreciate that very much. So otherwise, sometimes you can just I'm just gonna get away from you. Representation of bald people. Appreciate his last studio. I'm glad. Oh, add a shiny reflection to his head. Arrogant logician says it's not the hair that matters; it's how big the brain is in that dome, which actually. That has been disproven, at least in humans. The size of the brain doesn't necessarily mean that you're smarter. I saw a YouTube video on that, so it's probably true. Homer. Oh, the reflection deluxe text would be of the fire, that he's he's in front of a fire right now. So it would be dramatic lighting. <clears throat> yep, Arrogant Logician, YouTube has all the facts. And it's actually really, it's actually nice because those facts are usually easily digestible in any kind of time format you could possibly want. I mean, I, I mean, I would love to think that the bigger your head is, um, the smarter you are, because I have a big head. <laughs> but unfortunately, this has been disproven. Have a good dinner, Anna. Let us know what you have. I'm always interested in what people have. What, the deluxe talks your brain is more wrinkly than a granny who's been in the bathtub for too long. Well, that's good because that means you have more surface area on your brain. Yes. Yes, Dr. Mikachu had fried rice. So, and that sounds amazing. And lots of Zelda theory videos, 10, 10 minutes on a brief video. Yeah. I, I mean, I definitely watch way more YouTube than I do TV. Oops. Oh no. I think we're chugging a little bit. I might get, I might start getting a memory warning soon. I hope not. Jim plays games says his brain is a perfect sphere. That sounds likely. Oh, what are my favorite YouTube channels? Jim plays games wants to know. Uh, good question. There's some I watch because I I, I want to keep myself current on game industry stuff. So I like I like Escapist. I watch a lot of Escapist. Um, like they they they've got bits they've got those three minute reviews which are nice. You get an idea of games. Um, I like watching uh, Jack Packard and Yahtzee Croshaw play through games so they get an impression of what the games are like. They have the um, slightly Civil War podcasty thing they do on YouTube, which is great because 
they kind of address different issues in the game industry. So I like those. I like um, I like Jim Sterling's videos too. He, they're really well produced and really well written. So I like those a lot. What else do I like? Off the top of my head. I like Game Grumps. I've been watching their Danganronpa playthrough because I've never played a Danganronpa game and I know it's kind of like a mystery type of story and, and, and the one they're playing, the, the, this, it's students locked in a school. So I thought this is going to be interesting because it's kind of a similar format to, to the Crimson Diamond. You know, people are kind of all shut in together in a place and it's a mystery. So I've been watching that. Oh yes, in Masterminds, of course, Dylan Dow. I listen to the, the soundtrack that Dylan Dow has on his music channel. Love it. Love it, love it. Um, Justin mentioned Red Letter Media. Um, yeah, I loved I loved uh, Jack and Ev uh, and R Rich's um, previously recorded channel as well. I thought that was really really good, and I kind of missed that because I loved their their different perspectives on um, on video games, different games. But what else off the top of my head? You know, there's some sciency ones too that I like watching too. I can't remember their names though. It's, I like SciShow. It's a good general science one. Um, I wonder if I should. Should I make this in here dark, completely dark, or is it gonna look too scary? This one we have to take away the green screen. Is that gonna look? It's gonna be too dark. Yeah, it's gonna be too dark. Okay. Yeah, Eden Waith, you saw Game Brooms play Space Quest V? I saw um, Dan play, they could do a solo playthrough of King's Quest IV that's really good. So if you're, you're wanting to see any more kind of old school adventure game stuff, they, they, he did do that. And I thought it was really good that he did it. And he's just so relaxed that it's just a nice relaxing um, video. And it's quite long too. Late Blight did a recent Let's Play of King's Quest V. I did not watch that, but I am subscribed to his channel. Uh, Dr. Mikachu loves Dan Garampa. And Deluxe Talks watched, finished a game called Paradise Killer, which is similar. Yeah, I've never played that exact genre. Dream Boss, welcome, welcome to stream. Welcome, welcome to stream. And um, what else do I like? I had some other ones on the tip of my tongue in terms of what I watch. Of course, Lazy Game Reviews. I watch Lazy Game Reviews stuff. His stuff is excellent. I, I really like Pushing Up Roses. She recently did a video on Columbo, and I love Columbo. So that's another one. Definitely recommend. She loves she loves um, adventure games, and she actually did like a quick five-minute video on the Crimson Diamond, which I was so psyched to see. So no, she's really cool. Yes, Sklo One. Her and LGR are great. Oh, Eden with you did see Dan's K KQ4 LP. It was really good. Yes, and Stephen Walker, Adventure Game Geek, is also a, has a really good channel. One of my favorite things on Adventure Game Geek's um, channel are his playthroughs of Harvester he does with Arno. I, I just, it's amazing. <laughs> I have that as a playlist separate, like I will watch from time to time because I enjoy it so much. That one's a lot of fun. Yes, and LGR and Pushing Up Roses did a series on the Colonel's Bequest. The yeah, Arrogant Logician, I love, I love watching, I love watching videos of people playing Crimson Diamond. I love watching streamers play it too. And I try to make it, when, if people tag me and say, hey, we're playing your game, I will try to make it. Because, as I always say, it's like free testing. 
and I will not turn free testing down. You know? It's free live testing. Yak Wax Lips also has a really good channel. Ross's Game Dungeon. I don't know that one. Jim plays games. I have not heard of the new FMV game, Dr. Mikachu, and Dead of Night. I'm, I've, I don't think I've ever really played an FMV game. I started one a little bit ago. I started um, Zork Nemesis um, a while ago. I don't know if that really counts as an SM FMV game or just a 3D game. I tried that one for a little bit. I wasn't crazy about it. I don't know, I, I kind of prefer like the pixely stuff. And I think at the time, I don't think my computer ever was able to handle that stuff, so I, I, I think that's another reason it never grow, grew on me. Oh, just a Jeffy Ret Retrontario. I've never even heard of that. And Justin, I've never heard of Corona, Corona, or just VTubers in general. I don't know. So okay, Mr's FMV style game. So I guess like the Zork Nemesis game would also be FMV. Yeah, it's less to do. I am not, I'm not a huge fan of 3D, just generally speaking. Um, and I think that had to do with part of the reason I kind of, I had kind of like a a dark ages of not really playing computer games very much for a while, and I think part of that was when, yeah, games started becoming more 3D. You know, I was following all the way up to, you know, King's Quest VI and, and um, Quest for Glory IV and everything, but when everything started to take that turn into 3D, it kind of lost its appeal for me. I mean, you know, you look at the kind of game I'm making, you can kind of see that what I, what I tend to gravitate toward, and the, the FMV stuff was not it for me. Not to say that it's not any good, it just, my computer couldn't run it, and this this is the style that I prefer, so it's kind of, so I kind of, it was kind of off computer games for a bit. But now look at, now look where we are. Pixel art is back in a big way, and I couldn't be happier. It's kind of really cool to work on work on current games now that are pixel art. And of course, you would you might have seen in the the chat Nightbot is dropping links for Space Warlord Oregon Trading Simulator, which I also did pixel art for. So I, it's just been really it's been really cool to be able to see that style and and just be seen as a style and not having to do with technical technological limitations. It's just like that because people like the look. And I've or I always have, so it's always been really nice for me to see that come back. And I think that's helped me kind of get back into games, really. And yes, Arrogant Logician, I really do like Grim Fandango. I think that really um, it hit the mark between um, 3D and kind of awkward, but the style for the game fit fit perfectly. So it didn't it didn't bother me as much as other games might have, because they were also very simplified graphics, and this and the art direction was really excellent. And I don't know, it kind of yeah, it, it's it it did something. It achieved something in 3D in simpli in having it be simplified. That I think because it had such smart art direction. It really was more than the sum of its parts. And Alone in the Dark from 1992 was like, I, I remember being terrified. Oh, Retro Ontario is a group that archives a bunch of old Ontario TV stuff. That is awesome. I gotta write that down. I, well, I know, you know, I know just, nowadays writing stuff down equals Googling it on my phone and saving it for later. So I will do that. Retron Terio. Homer. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. 
Twin Sins Odyssey. That might have been the same studio. And low poly 3D is coming back. I think of it, yeah, I mean, I think anything can be done well, for sure. Twin Sins LBA, Little Big Adventure with Small French Studio. Yeah. And Tim Schafer's writing is also very good, of course. So let's see. Is his head just really big? Do I have to make his body much bigger? I think that might be the case. I, I tend to make big-headed people with little bodies. I have not seen old-timey computer show on Twitch. So I'm going to just do the same thing where I, I enter that onto my phone to look at later. Retro Ontario. Very cool. Old Timey. That's a heck of a Twitch name, by the way. Computer show. Oh, here it is. Oh, and she also got a Twitter. Oh, I see. It's a 24-7 curated showcase of videotapes and films on computers and video games. Okay, cool. I have it. Oh, same creative director, Mika, Dr. Mikachu says. Yeah, his Maniac Mansion look. I don't know. I mean, he is sitting down. Maybe I need to make his shoulder broader. I feel... I do feel this is not quite right. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer. We're going to just select. Let's make sure we are at nearest neighbor for preferences. Yes. Image interpolation at nearest neighbor. That's what you want for pixel art. And that's something, I don't know if, I don't know if Grindelwald's still here, but I was happy to blow his mind with that detail once when he was watching on stream. Proportions, okay, legs look kind of short. Well, let's just try to globally um, make everything big and see what we think. Yeah, I think I like it. I think I like him bigger. Yeah, second I call Game Grumps, they pump out videos. And I'm so grateful because what, what I like to do is I like to wake up in the morning, eat oatmeal, and watch their latest Danganronpa LP video. That's my, that's my routine. That's what, what, what my routine has been for quite some time now. And yes, Justin, that's an also good, good artist tip, flipping horizontal. So let's do that. Oh, Cosmic Void wants to know how I did, how I did the size thing. Yeah, I just, I just used the, the marquee, not the marquee, the poly lasso, polygonal lasso tool, upper left, second from the top. And I selected only the body and I, I just scaled it up. So that actually, th I think that worked out pretty nice. So I do like him bigger. Yeah. And also, if we want, we can flip as Justin suggested. We can rotate, flip horizontal. Well, it only flipped him horizontally. Flip whole canvas horizontal. Rotate canvas. There we go. Definitely, yeah, and his legs are short, for sure. So we're gonna fix that. So we figured out the legs and the scale. I'm gonna use the same polygonal lasso, lasso tool and we're gonna take his legs and we're gonna move them down. Cause yeah, I think they're too short. Which basically is me in a nutshell, <laughs> big head, little body, and short legs. I, I, I think that's why I tend to um, gravitate toward that look. And his boots are up to his knees, but I think the knee to shin is, is a bit, so let's fix that. 
Chibi. <laughs> yeah, Crom notes Chibi. Yeah, I think yeah, I think we need to give him his legs. Dr. Mikuchi wants to know if I can do a series of YouTube videos that's just little known Photoshop tips. I don't I don't know if I'm qualified to do that considering the that Twitter video with me discovering the non anti aliased eraser tool for the first time and it just blowing my mind on stream which I have handy. If anyone wants to relive that moment. Oh, that doesn't work anymore? Give me a second. Hold on. Go, let me go to, go to Big Julia View because I want to just check. I could have sworn I had that linked somewhere. So let me just check my Nightbot. <clears throat> the epic um, the epic clip of me discovering let's see here where is it oh it's ps thank you nightbot thank you bill coon <laughs> thank you bill coon via nightbot or nightbot via bill coon for that yeah so i don't know if i'm the best person to <laughs> to give little known photoshop tips if something like that has evaded me all this time. Yeah, as a, as a fellow Ontarian, I'm very interested in Retro Ontario. For sure. And Jim plays games, you're right. Realistic proportions don't leave much room for face detail, which is kind of the beauty of it because I look at Nancy Maple's blank little face and I find I feel affection toward it because people kind of ascribe their own emotion to it in a way. It's like Hello Kitty. Oh, he's, uh, this is what happens. Now we started to move stuff around. Now we really got to start moving stuff around. Oh, that's better. Okay. I like her little face. I, I like that it's, yeah, you can't really tell what's going on in her face. CGG Rick, good to see you. Can I... Shout you out, is that the Twitch channel you guys are using? Um, I hope so, because I'm about to shout you out. So CGG Rick is from the Classic Gamers Guild. And they uh, they stream occasionally. There's a Classic Gamers Guild podcast um, that is very good. And I've been on it a few times. And... Uh, They had also, of course, Ken and Roberta Williams was on there, which is amazing. And um, among others, of course. And I recommend that as, as some easy listening. So we have this guy getting there. It's starting to chug a little bit. Nothing's happening. Oh. <sighs> Wrong layer. Okay, so that's your personal channel? Okay, you stream now and then. Ah, uh, yes. This, the latest CGG podcast episode is about 1989, which Colonel's Bequest came out in 1989, so it's, it's something that I consider a pretty significant year for sure. 
Oh, shoot. Yes, you should be totally seeing. Thank you, Bill Coon. You should totally be seeing Photoshop right now. <laughs> you need a scene command to say, Julia, we need. Yes, sorry, guys. Yeah, I, I forget um, a lot, generally speaking. Yes, the Photoshop clip, clip is flashback inducing and is the art process in a nutshell. I, I'm, you know, I'm glad it happened because now I know. And I'm never, ever, 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 ever going to forget. Oh, yeah. Lord British was also on. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Richard Garriott was on the CGG podcast as well. The Coles, Lorraine Corey Cole. Yeah, Jim plays games. I think I think we've all had those moments. And and I've been using CS2 for a very long time. And you just never know. And, and Francisco as well. I mean, Francisco's been using it just as long as I have Photoshop CS2. And we've, we've both been surprised. And we've both been able to surprise each other. With, with little things here and there. And I think it's, you know, I think it's really cool. But, but for real, I mean, that's a demonstration of what I found. So the pencil, the pencil tool that I'm working on here in the upper left, there's the brush tool, pencil tool, and the color replacement tool. So the brush tool is the one that has, you know, it's all fuzzy like this, right? The pencil tool is what we're using, which is this beautiful jaggedy, jaggedy brush. So you would think the, the eraser tool would be the same, where it's got the eraser tool, um, hold on, which was set for me as brush, which is this, this uh, anti-alias brush. There's no option to turn off anti-aliasing um, on this menu bar, which you have for some of the other ones. So for if you have the magic wand, for instance, you can turn on and off anti-aliasing at this upper, in this upper area. But for the eraser tool, you do not have that option. Neither is it in the same kind of area as this, this flyout menu. It's not here, like it would be for the pencil tool or how it would be for the magic wand tool. It's actually this drop down menu, which I did not <laughs> I did not know. <clears throat> oh no, just as Jeffy says that the Retro Ontario streams don't get archived? Oh, that's too bad. I think that stuff should be on YouTube. Justin, can you still install old versions of Photoshop on new computers? They, sh they did shut down the name reg the registration servers for old products. They did indeed. They did indeed. And all I'll say in that regard is I have the disks. And if I have the disks, I'm allowed to have the program that I paid full price for. And I will do that whatever way possible. And, and that's all that needs to be said about that. Yes, and this, that dreaded brush, yeah, it's just Cosmic Void 3, yeah, I just... I mean, I had workarounds, of course. You know, that for not having the non anti alias eraser brush, I have workarounds. But now that I have it, I'm, you know, definitely taking full advantage. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Rick says that me being the first guest give give you instant credibility that you wouldn't have had otherwise. I don't know about that, Rick. <laughs> but thank you. Rogue, hello. Yes, this is a giant mug of awakeness. It is not. This is a mug of raspberry herbal tea. It's my favorite um, um, favorite cheap to be had flavored tea. It's it's the Celestial Seasonings Fruit Variety Pack. 
And it's not the best tea you're ever going to find, but sometimes you just want fruity tea that is easy to find and fairly inexpensive. Jim plays games that it should be illegal to revoke access to the product that you paid for. Yeah, I, you know, I wish they had come up with like a patch or something for people who have those products so that it would stop asking for registration or something. They could have potentially done that, but anyway, I, I have my means <laughs> of getting them. Rooibos, Roy Ro Roke, I love rooibos tea. Can use Windows version of Photoshop CS2 under Wine or Linux. It's the last version of Photoshop that worked perfectly under Wine. I didn't know you could use it with Wine. I guess why not? <laughs> Just a Jeffy. Um, statistically speaking, it's, there's a very high chance, unfortunately, you're the only one who cares about Linux in chat right now. I hate to break it to you, but I guess you're probably used to that. Blast for tea. <laughs> very good. Yes, um, rooibos is not caffeinated, apparently, and you can't oversteep it. I, I actually am really quite fond of rooibos. <laughs> yeah, Justin, Jeffy, you get it? I'm so sorry. And it's your job? Okay. As well. And Mousemus loves Linux. Irreverent Pixel loves Linux. You know what? Maybe I'm wrong. I am wrong. In this crowd, I should have known better, so... I forgot for a second, you know, who, who, who the kinds of people, my people, you know, I, well, you know, I'm making a game that looks like it was from 30 years ago, and uh, I need to remember that. Yes, four out of 42 people right now are into Linux, which is higher than the general population. <laughs> Oh, Justin Jeff, you work in VFX, cool. You use Linux and VFX? Yeah, Roke, I also oversteep everything. I just leave the bag in there, I don't care. Cromno wants to know if I've used GIMP. I have tried it. I tried it for a hot second. And my, my problem is, is that I'm so used to Photoshop that any time it deviated in the slightest from Photoshop, it would fill me with impotent rage. Arrogant Logician wants to know, does AGS support Linux games? I don't think so. I'm not 100%, but I don't think so. Or Roku, you don't want to oversteep your herbal tea? I, I oversteep everything. I oversteep everything. Um, I know some people, it can like upset their stomachs and stuff because it can get really tannic, but I just oversteep everything. You should do a Twitch poll on Linux forgot how to do the polls. And you know what? We have three minutes left. I think we're going to... Just Jim plays games. Good timing. Yeah, I'm about to end it. I actually, I got to look for someone to raid. Windows only. AGS is Windows only, but it can run a game on Linux. Good to know. Okay, and Jester Jeffrey says can definitely run AGS games in Linux. Okay. Almost 100% Linux and VFX? Really? Whoa. I wonder how that happened. Okay. Anyway, I think we're getting there with this guy. Like, he's never going to look... He's never going to look, you know, realistic. Really? But I think we're making some progress there. But yeah, I'm going to... I'm gonna find someone to raid. Find someone to raid. 
Okay, I'm just, wow. I gotta fig figure out my camera angle. Okay. Thanks for coming, Reverend, Reverend Pixel. Good to see you. Bill Kuhn as well, of course, everyone. Furroy, you just exported a Linux version of your game to Godot and it actually worked. Yes, you, hopefully you got to see enough pixels that they broke. I'm sorry. Yeah, we just um, going to be signing off soon, but I got to find someone to raid. Um, give me a second here. I need. I forgot to turn the music on too this whole time. Okay. You made it to the end for once, you did, Butler's lover. Yes. Thank you for. I know it's late for you, so thank you so much for for hanging in there. Let us check. Let us check Twitch. Who is on? Who do we have? What do we have? Who and what? Yes, Arrogant Logician, I've been doing shorter streams recently. I've just I've been busy, busy, and I need to get other stuff done, unfortunately. Right at the push and button stock, right at the end. Yeah, I'm sorry, we're just, we're just signing off. Yes, yes, Dr. Mikshu taught me how to do polls a while back, <laughs> but um, I'm not going to get one done tonight. I'm going to, I'm just trying to figure out who we're going to, who we're going to raid. Who we're going to raid. Just taking a look here. It might be... I think it might be... Yes, Rook, it's always a great crowd in here. I'm always pleased to come on. And I'm always glad to stream when I get a chance. Who are we gonna raid? We're gonna maybe raid Ren. Let's get that let's get that going. Ren the Renaissance is a great retro streamer. Um, also paints beautifully. Yeah, just a Jeffy, yeah, raid is a Twitch thing, so what I can do is um, everyone that's watching right now in, in chat, we get um, we get on a bus together and we just get deposited in, in, in someone else's stream that I that I kind of pick. Um, I don't have I need to find more more streamers actually. But for now I'm probably gonna just call it and, and uh, raid Ren because and and there and for thanks for the suggestion. I'll I need to let me write that down and I will check out that streamer. Adam, C. Eunice. Okay. Yes, Amberzine, thank you again for your sub. I really appreciate it. It's like party. It is like party crashing. So let's raid. And the only thing about the Renaissance's name is that I, I never heard, can spell it. There, any S, yes. Yeah, so Renaissance is a great retro streamer, super relaxed. He's a great painter as well. And he's he's right now playing La Mulana, I believe. So we're going to have that on for tonight. Thank you guys so much for being here. Next week, hopefully, will be a Dan stream with music. And we've been just going pa going through all the stuff we've done up to this point and polishing it up. So it's a nice way. If you haven't been to Dan's stream, you can see some of the music we've already done and kind of get into get into sort of a state where we can actually put it in the game, which I'm I'm hoping um, I can do more of because Dan has not sent me any of these files and and I kind of want them. And yeah, CGG Rick, have a good night. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, check out the CGG podcast for sure with. Rick and Anna and Paul. It's super chill. Yes, and Cromwell, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I can show you guys AGS. I don't know if I'll show you guys AGS again. The only thing I haven't shown is the audio stuff, which I'm actually not that good on, so I don't know if I'll actually show that. But, yeah, I mean, that covered all the basics, really. If you want to make an adventure game, you know, if you watch those, I mean, there are better tutorials on YouTube, of course, but if you just want to get a brief overview on how that stuff works, then, then hopefully those streams have done it. But it looks like everyone's on the bus, nearly, so let's read. Have a good night, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Here we go.